If you walk on the path of truth all the powers in the universe help you. Corruption has to be removed from the whole country. People like Narendra Modi and Rahul Gandhi, who have spent 500 crore to build their brands, will take that money back from us only. How can they deliver good governance? If we provide quality education to one generation, poverty will automatically be eradicated from society. Actually, no one is born honest or corrupt. I have seen my parents struggle with meager means to run a family. That's why giving free and good education, free health services, water, electricity, public transport and safety of women are my top priority. We have ended the VIP culture in Delhi. We made additional night shelters for the poor. We have started the anti-corruption helpline. We are impartial and are not against anybody. They, say Kariwal fights a lot. Yes, I do, but not for my wife or children. I fight for your rights. So you tell me, should I fight or not? I accept I use bad language, but I speak from the heart. Doing politics over water is not good as people from Punjab and Haryana are also our own like that of Delhi. Everyone should get water. Indian polity has failed to provide solutions to the common man's problems. Right to information is a small concrete step in making our polity more democratic. Our anti-corruption systems have inherently and intently been kept flawed. We fought against British not because of the color of their skin but also because of the exploitative character of their government. Many people say that we have sufficient laws in our country, just that they are not implemented properly. I completely disagree with them. I have studied many of the laws very carefully. We are still being governed by the same colonial laws which existed in British times. They have not been changed. Many of these laws need to be changed. There isn't a single developed country which does not have its citizens well educated. Our kids are our biggest assets. They are the future of our country. If we provide them good education, no one can stop India from becoming a developed country. Our aim should be to not allow a single corrupt politician or even a family member to enter the house. MPs are basically bonded laborer of their parties. And it is the party high command of each party, which takes decisions. Lots of people tell me I am straightforward. No alliance can be formed on Twitter. Why should the PM be placed on such a high pedestal? That an ordinary citizen should not even have the guts to write a letter to the PM. I have not flouted any rules on transfers or posting. I am a man in a hurry. We have to work both from office and roadside. I am impatient. No person can fool all the people all the time. We want to spread the movement and want people to join in. Anyone who is against corruption should join, be it Baba Ramdev or the common man. We never said that we don't have faith in parliament. We have great respect for parliament. The representatives of people become uncrowned kings and queens once they get into parliament. When you are running the country, it means you work for the poor people. It doesn't mean you siphon off money of disabled people. It does not mean you allot public property like coal for free to rich people. We have to make the bureaucracy accountable to the people. It is not something esoteric, it can be done. One thing that is great about India, is the freedom to speak and the spaces available, in our democracy to protest which doesn't exist in many places in the world. We want people to tell us the possible steps that can be taken to save ourselves from the harmful effects of air pollution. Cap, Panchayats are a group of people who come together. There is no bar on people to assemble in this country. If someone thinks that education, 
health, infrastructure all are different sectors and issues and they ought to be fought independently, then they are mistaken. There is an underlying pattern in the process. And that is bad governance. Indians are first class people suffering from third class governance. Education is the antidote to poverty. It is easy to talk about development. However, it entails painstaking efforts to actually make it happen. I want to tell the law and order machinery not to spare anyone who indulges in unlawful activities. My children feel proud of me. Since their father is honest, they have nothing to be ashamed about. At the heart of all problems lies the politics of the country. We have a democracy of elections to elections. After winning an election, the parties become brazen and arrogant. They would do all wrong things and if you question them, they would say, why don't you change the government next time? But that would be five years later. What do I do right now? I am suffering right now. No one gets punished for corruption in our country. We have police stations for the poor but CBI, CVC and CAGs for the rich with nearly nil recovery of ill-usurped wealth. The CVC and CAG are independent but merely recommendatory. The government often ignores their advice. Economic growth and future superpower status is all very good but that doesn't guarantee dignity for every individual. Providing good education to all citizens, is necessary if India wishes to be counted as a developed nation. We have never said that we want to challenge the institution of parliament. This democracy is not by the people, of the people, for the people. This democracy is about by the party high command, of the party high command, and for the party high command. I completely disagree if someone says that corruption of junior government officers should be overlooked. OP was formed to expose the Congress's scam. We could never think of an alliance with the Congress, but to fight the BJP we have to think of something like that. I will keep repeating, that if you find me guilty of corruption then take the strictest action against me. It is a British legacy that we have such a strict hierarchy that we can't even write a letter to our PM. I don't agree that the Somnot Bharti incident has been an embarrassment. I want to remain a common man, want to spend time with my family. No one can create a movement. No one can create a Gandhi. We, alone, can't change the country. We should do it together. We are not entering into politics to acquire power. We need to work out what kind of systems of governance we should have. Movements live on a day-to-day -day basis. In fact, the media should not be run by the government at all. Every person in this country is suffering because of bad governance. I am not a terrorist, I am a former chief minister. Yes, I do believe in karma. In my childhood I was a believer. People are sick of the political system and the players in the system, BJP, Congress, Akalis. They want a good alternative and those who can deliver. We feel, that the government should not interfere too much in private sector. I want to make Delhi a place where people of all religions feel safe. I respect Kiran Bedi, she is like my elder sister. I want to request Modiji that you cannot accomplish nation building by disappointing the government employees. Leadership is important in politics. In a democracy, people are supreme. My job is to change the system so all of India can shine. When I used to fight against the corrupt system, my wife ran the house and my mother supported me. When ordinary people come together, they can upset the mighty. Only love can heal hatred. Hatred will only breed hatred. Congress as well as BJP candidates are in the pockets of Adonis. 
Delhi becomes a gas chamber every year with the advent of winters, mainly due to stubble burning. Too much of power has got concentrated in the hands of the central and state governments. I am not against privatization of the media channels but I stand for a strong regulation and transparency. Contrary to what certain sections of the media have been reporting, there are no differences between Swami Agnaish, Kiran Bedi and me. I never imagined in my life that I will fight elections or form a political party.